Good evening. I'm Pam Martin. And I'm Jim Axel. Tonight, hundreds packed the Civic Center downtown. Sparks flying over plans to build the Presidential Parkway. Jim Kay has a live update. Douglasville residents out in force as well tonight, telling officials they are against plans for a landfill. Ken Cook will tell us how long the new dry weather is going to be with us. And Corey McFerrin reports live on how the Braves blasted the Dodgers. It's all next on Eyewitness News Update. Next, Atlanta's number one late newscast. This is Eyewitness News Update with Forrest Sawyer, Pam Martin, Ken Cook with weather, and Corey McFerrin with sports. Good evening, Forrest Sawyer's on assignment. Douglasville residents tonight fighting plans for a landfill in their neighborhood. And the Braves surprised the Dodgers in the first of three. Corey McFerrin reports live from the stadium. But our top story tonight, more than 1,000 people packed the Civic Center tonight. Jim Kay reports the final public hearing on the Presidential Parkway will go down as one of the loudest protests in Atlanta road building history. Many of these people here tonight have been through this sort of thing before. They were part of the original protest which defeated the Northeast Parkway and the I-485 road projects. Many believe the Presidential Parkway is a reincarnation of those road projects. Many at the pre-meeting protest were experienced at it. The rally itself was reminiscent of some held in the 60s. Signs, songs, chants, and a mix of people. There were politicians. I oppose the construction of the Stone Mountain Freeway and I-485. There were people directly affected by the road. The freeway would be about 50 feet from the front of my house. And there were people from far away. Bob Cooney lives in Buckhead. Oh, I'm just uh, interested in uh, historic preservation and, and the maintaining of, of some beautiful land that uh, will be totally disrupted by, by this highway as proposed. rally was only a warm-up for what was supposed to have been an orderly public hearing. But Department of Transportation speaker remarks were interrupted time and again by hissing jeers and shouts. Engineer Pelham Williams' presentation included project alternatives, build or no build. The no build option was well received. DOT Commissioner Tom Moreland sat through the presentation. He was critical of crowd reaction, saying it was the worst he'd ever seen, but it does carry weight. But uh, it's a chance for a responsible, and I guess uh, tonight we'd have to say irresponsible, views to be given. So uh, it has some uh, part in the process, and it carries some weight. I don't feel it's necessary to pave over parks, green grass, to facilitate the ease of suburban commuters. Presidential Parkway opponent Carol Platt drew strong crowd reaction with his written statement. How many of you want your children to play in a concrete playground polluted by the exhaust of commuter automobiles? I support the no build option. Thank you. We're live now here at the uh, Civic Center where the crowd of about 3,000 has dwindled to perhaps 100 people, but testimony is still going on here. No person tonight came to speak in favor of the parkway. No one. Andrew Young says that it is a unique opportunity that will be passed up to have a road, a park, a bike trail, and a lot of original sculpture and unique design all at the same time. These people think it's just another road. They don't want it. Of course, we'll be following this story. Thank you. Jim Kay reporting live from the Civic Center. Well, a victory tonight for 200 residents of Douglasville. County commissioners there deciding to move the site of a proposed landfill tonight after residents voiced their disapproval. Well, the landfill was to have been built on Cedar Mountain Road next to a church and close to 350 homes. The people in the area got together, drafted petitions, and they showed up in force tonight. The commissioners then went along. A federal judge says conditions at the Clayton County Jail are awful, and he sets a six-month deadline for officials to renovate that facility. Judge Richard Freeman gave officials 30 days to develop some plans. 
Freeman says crowded conditions at the facility violate the inmates' constitutional rights. Clarence Eugene Robinson has surrendered tonight to the FBI in Miami. Robinson was wanted in connection with the shooting of two FBI agents last Friday in Orange City, Florida, and on murder, drug, and robbery charges as well. Both agents are in serious condition. And local police are still looking for leads in the murder of a North Atlanta man. Stephen Hines was shot to death at his apartment during an apparent robbery attempt. A $10,000 reward is being offered. Police believe the two suspects are also involved in other metro robberies. Well, one man dead in College Park late today after gunfire rocked an apartment at 2800 Camp Creek Parkway. College Park police telling Eyewitness News three men tried to rob the two men inside the apartment. Well, the men inside shot at the three with a 38 caliber handgun, killing one. The other two got away. Police know who the dead man is, but they aren't releasing his name. No charges filed yet in this shooting. Well, in national news, it did not take long today for the U.S. government to retaliate against the Nicaraguan government. The Nicaraguans had expelled three American diplomats, charging they were part of a plot to assassinate the Nicaraguan foreign minister, a charge the returning Americans today denied. The retaliation came swiftly as six Nicaraguan consulates were ordered closed in New York, Miami, New Orleans, Houston, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. In all, 21 Nicaraguan diplomats and their families were given 24 hours to get out of the United States. Nicaragua's official radio saying tonight that those expulsions won't end their revolution and there will be an official response from the Sandinista government in Managua. Back in this country, in Utah, some residents are enjoying a temporary reprieve from the floodwaters that have forced thousands from their homes. The melting snow has subsided, but officials are warning that the Salt Lake City area will be hit with heavier flooding later this week when the temperature rises. The flooding is causing many problems. The water table under the Great Salt Lake has risen, causing erosion of railroad tracks and threatening the city's airport runways. And officials created a man-made disaster today when they mistakenly diverted some of that flood water to an area that had been dry. Still ahead on TV5 Eyewitness News Update, an ex-Cobb County High School coach sentenced to eight years behind bars. And Barbara Nevins reports on the release of a convicted drug offender from prison and why some Cobb County officials are angry. The release of a convicted drug offender under a special prison program has angered the Cobb County officials who helped to put him behind bars. Tonight, Barbara Nevins has the story of Philip Forbus. We worked hard to put the man behind bars, and now without any input from us, he's out. He's uh, not accountable to this office or the judge anymore. He's accountable to the Pardon and Paroles Board. Jim Martin, assistant Cobb County District Attorney, still has the evidence from a case he prosecuted in 1981. 19,000 methoquilone tablets. Undercover agents made a deal in the parking lot of this restaurant with two men on September 4th, 1980. 19,000 quaalude tablets for $27,500. The men were busted. Philip Forbes, one of the men, sentenced to 15 years. He served 11 months, and the Pardons and Paroles Board paroled him on June 2nd as part of a special release program aimed at clearing out overcrowded prisons and jails. He scored very high on his parole success factor, which would indicate that he would be a very good parole risk. Now, in order to make more room in the prison system for violent offenders, the board has adopted this program whereby nonviolent offenders that would, would score well and be relatively good parole risk will serve much less time than those violent offenders will. Forbus works here at the Siam Zoo on Cheshire Bridge Road. We could not locate him today. Martin and the Cobb County DA's staff think his release makes a mockery of the criminal justice system. The Forbes parole is not likely to be revoked, and parole officials warn that district attorneys will have to get used to the idea of early parole for nonviolent criminals. I'm Barbara Nevins, TV5 Eyewitness News Update. A former Cobb County High School basketball coach sentenced to eight years in prison today and still faces charges of indecent exposure to three small children. Now because of those charges, Richard Bonberg's probation from an earlier sex offense was revoked, the eight-year sentence imposed. And the state Supreme Court today reversing the conviction of South Georgia activist Tom Shaw, citing trial error. Shaw had been convicted of assaulting a Dooley County deputy last year. More than 150 families near Philadelphia forced to evacuate their homes. Officials discovered 1,000 pounds of unstable dynamite in a trailer parked behind a shopping center in the town of Feasterville. They began to detonate the explosive material last night, some of it chemically returning to nitroglycerin. Police spent most of the day moving that dynamite out of the area. 
In Augusta tonight, little Virgil Williams is safe and healthy after being taken away from his mother for over a week. That newborn baby was kidnapped from a university hospital, apparently by a woman posing as a nurse. Now, authorities say the baby was found earlier today at an apartment complex in North Augusta. A woman at that complex was arrested, but no charges have been filed against her as of yet. Well, the interest rate ceiling for FHA and VA loans has jumped to 12 percent, the first increase in more than a year. Officials saying that half-point increase was needed to keep mortgage money available to moderate and middle-income home buyers. An official of the National Home Builders Association said that increase, quote, stinks. Some 200,000 folks are now back on the Social Security Disability Program. They were taken off during the Reagan administration's crackdown on alleged cheaters.